Testing, testing, testing. <clears throat> Hi there, guys. My name is Rohan Bivit, and today we are going to be talking about the skin. We're going to be talking about what the skin is and how does it help us. So, if you did not know, the skin is the largest organ in our body, okay? It's the largest one. It covers us entirely. It basically contributes to 16% of our weight is just from skin. And if you just chopped it all off and put it straight fresh on the ground, it would roughly be around around 1.7 square meters. And most people just think, oh, it's just there to keep our insides in, right? But no, there's still so much more to that. So let's see where skin comes from. So skin is a part of the integumentary system, okay? Now this system mainly composes of hair, Specialized nerves, nails, and glands, uh, and specialized glands as well, are, part, are all a part of this system, which the skin is in, okay? So look here, we have the diagram of one. I'll try to do my best, sorry for the lines dashing through all of it. I just need to label some stuff out. So as we see here, so the skin is mainly comprised of three parts. The epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. These three parts are all there to, to basically make up the skin. But what does the skin also do? It protects, it also helps us to sense, and it also helps us to regulate as well. So let's do, let's first look at the epidermis side and let's see about Merkel cells. These mainly reside in the epidermis and these cells are basically touch sensitive. So pressure is sensed on, then these cells will take action. So Merkel cells allow us to sense, right? Well, pressure, it allows us to sense pressure, okay? And just to show how many Merkel cells there are, okay? There are around 700. Merkel cells just in this thumb and not only that there can also be around 200 to not 200 2,500 receptor nerve receptors also in this one thumb that's crazy right and like well not all of it actually just only one square centimeter actually is made up of that in reality not the entire thing is made up of what 750 Merkel cells. No. One square centimeter has that many Merkel cells. That's how many there are that allow us to sense. As we also know, the skin can be thick or thin. Thinnest like our eyebrows here. Such as these eyelids. The, what about our eyelids? These are, as, these are as thin as 0 0.5 millimeters. The skin right over here, okay? Skin right over there. But, let's say with our feet here, it can grow up to 4 millimeters in thickness, in girthiness, okay? Thick. But let's also look at some other stuff. Okay, so what about the protection part? So our skin also protects us from physical stuff, such as in the dermis sector. It's mostly made up of collagen, which allows us to absorb, uh, so absorb and protects us. So say we get hit, it absorbs the damage, okay, which not only protects us as well but it also protects us from microorganisms as well, okay? So mainly in the epidermis sector, there are, it's mainly also composed of these cells called keratinites, keratinites, okay? And these specialized cells basically start from the bottom and slowly move up as they age. They move up until they die, okay? So as they move up, they slowly start to get filled with this protein called keratin, which basically makes them thick and durable, which eventually gets to the top when now it's fully dead cells just shielded on top, which 
allows us to, which basically means that some microorganisms just can't get in. They just can't. But say some uh, harmful cells or bacteria just enter in somehow. Well, then we have the Langerum cells, okay? Now, these cells here, okay? These are basically like sirens. So, when they detect an enemy, okay, or a, in this case, a microorganism that's threatful or harmful, then it'll basically send a signal to the nearest white blood cell and attack it, okay? And then an immune response hits, and then it's all cleaned up as well, okay? Now, another fact about it is what about the regulation part? Well, this is mainly due to our nerve cell. As we can see here in the hypodermis, this is where the blood cells are, but this is also where nerve cells go in. So when we, this allows us to sense stuff, and it sends the signal to the brain. In return, the brain allows, us to, allows it to either contract or shrink the blood cells. So if they contract it, it basically allows heat to release. Or if they want heat within, they just, they just shrink it down very thinly. So that way the heat is stuck inside. So it regulates this part. Okay, and these blood cells move around, giving stuff to this and that. Here we have the hair follicle as well, so that's where uh, hair is, and mainly hair is used to also protect the skin as well. Okay, say someone just, right, so most of hair follicles are on the top of our head to protect us from, again, sunburns and also to any physical damage, it will also attempt to soften as well. And these hair follicles are all over our body, except for the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. Okay? Now, let's also look at some other stuff, such as, what about the microbacteria? Well, they most, well, not microbacteria, but microorganisms. They mainly thrive in the sub sebiscus gland okay so the sebiscus area is right next to the hair follicle which produces this oily like substance all over our body which basically means that it keeps these long term cells just in constant check to make sure that no threat at whatever time gets in and if a threat is actually there they know what to do and these bacteria mostly thrive in this area okay and there are, and also another contribution to the regulation part is the sweat gland as well. This mainly secretes sweat. Uh, basically, it also secretes sweat when cooled, when cooling, so it releases heat as well to make you cooler as well. Okay, and there are also these muscles here. Say if it gets more colder and chilly, right? Then there are these little muscles called arachnopilla, okay? And these muscles basically pull or push. So when it's like super hot, they pull and it's like this. But when it's super cold, they push it in and make the hair stand up. This phenomenon is known as goosebumps, okay? And it makes our hair stand straight so that way we can have more internalized heat inside, okay? And that's mainly some facts about the skin, okay? And that's it for today's video. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!